Last time I met Dr. Ralph, he was in a bad mood. He wanted to be left alone. I let him be. He was thinking deeply about something. Era, can you come inside, please? I slacked off from my seat. Dr. Ralph looked like a defeated man. I fail to understand why a little kid won't speak, he uttered abruptly. I looked at him, gazing into his eyes to let him continue speaking. He placed his hands on my shoulder. Era, you are a woman. Maybe the kid can open up to you. If you can build the trust, he can let go off the weight he is carrying. I want to see the kid speaking. The reputation of AM's doctor is at stake. I fixated my eyes on him. Calm down, Dr. Ralph. I trust your judgment. You will treat him and cure his disorder. He sighed. I know you would say that. Let's go and see the patient. Dr. Ralph was eccentric, but I loved his eccentricity. Maybe that's why we were together. We walked our way towards Green Park. Dr. Ralph loved walking. He would ponder over the differential diagnosis as he walked. He would say his brain worked faster when he walked. It was exercise after all. The tall buildings blot the smoke coming out of vehicles. Usually there are a lot of auto rickshaws that work on CNG. But still, there is smoke that seems to come out of nowhere and settle down in the city. On the way, he stopped at a quaint shop selling old items. Dr. Ralph bought an old lamp and kept in his bag. I was curious but deferred asking questions seeing it to be an improper time. We walked for more than a kilometer. I badly wanted to hold Dr. Ralph's hand, but instead, I held his arm which he gave absent-mindedly for support. We reached an apartment and there was a Punjabi gentleman who ushered us upstairs. Doctor, my son has refused to eat and is growing emaciated day by day. We tried coaxing him to eat, cooked his favorite dishes, but he has only refused. We entered a small room where a boy of about nine years was lying on the bed. He was pale and weak. I held his hand to check his pulse. Feeble, but regular. Dr. Ralph tried initiating a conversation. It's a lovely day. On the way while walking, I came across this old lamp lying near the bushes. Dr. Ralph said, drawing out the old lamp from his bag. I think it's a genie lamp and can fulfill wishes. Wanna try? I was puzzled by this weird argument of Dr. Ralph. Who would believe in such nonsense stories, but not for the child? There was a smile on the teary-eyed face. The child stared at the lamp curiously. You know, Dr. Ralph said, yesterday I wanted to eat noodles while I was cleaning this lamp. And lo, presto Ms. Era appeared with her lunchbox. And guess what? She had brought noodles from her home, which she shared with me. Dr. Ralph looked at me meaningfully and I played along. The child took the lamp and rubbed it, sure as if a genie would appear to fulfill his wishes. I was eager to know what the child wished for and so did Dr. Ralph. So, what did you wish for? Dr. Ralph asked. The child was hesitant to reply. Say it softly for the wind to carry your wish or it won't work. I want to be the eldest child, the boy blurted out. I was surprised. What a strange wish. Was the boy bullied by his siblings? I looked at Dr. Ralph seeking an answer. Why do you want to be the eldest child, Sonny? Dr. Ralph asked. Because my father and brother last week were talking about the two-child policy, population control, and then even my class teacher was telling about this. But there is nothing wrong with the two-child policy, I said. It will be good for the country. We can get better services. The boy looked at me skeptically. I am the third child. Suddenly, I saw through the eyes of the child. What seemed trivial for an adult meant a life for a child. So, what if you are the third child? Dr. Ralph asked. So, if the government brings this two-child policy, will they not kill me? And that's when things became crystal clear. Dr. Ralph smiled. I am the third child, and so is here, Miss Era. The government won't kill us. But you are adults, the boy said. They will only kill children. See, son, the government can't kill children. In fact, only after the policy is applied, people will have two children. For now, people can have three, four, and even five children. So nothing is going to happen to you. Are you sure about it? Absolutely, Dr. Ralph said. The child smiled and his face glowed as if a heavy burden had been lifted. See, the genie answered your wish, I said, directly or indirectly. It's a magic lamp after all. Can I keep the lamp? The boy asked. 
Sure, but use it wisely, doctor, Ralph said.